Hi everyone! Welcome to the Ellington One Room Schoolhouse. I'm your host, Mr. Spada. We are so excited to have you here for the very first episode of our new distance learning show. Now before we get started, I have an extremely important message from all of your teachers. Because right before I came on to record, they wanted me to let you know that they miss every single one of you and they can't wait to see you again. But today, we have a show full of videos and lessons from your teachers. To tell us what we're going to learn today, we have Mr. Hendrickson here with us. Hi, Mr. Hendrickson. Mr. Spada, how are you? We're doing awesome. Can you tell us what we're going to learn about today? You know, I am so excited to be here. What an exciting day of learning going on. And I'm wishing everyone a wonderful day of learning. I'm right in front of my wishing well. And we're wishing you a great day of learning. Today, we're going to learn about creating a great learning space. We're also going to learn about counting. We're going to learn about ways to stay active with physical education at home, using your bodies and minds and getting stronger. We're going to learn about neat artwork with thumbprints. Watch out for the puppets. We're also going to have a special mystery reader. And today, you're also going to learn about vowel teams. They can be really tricky, so pay close attention to that. And a science experiment that you can do at home that's going to teach you about density. So everyone at home, moms and dads and parents and family members watching, I'll be back again at the end of the show to talk about all of the wonderful learning and go into a little bit of detail about why it was so important. So sit back, enjoy the show, and we'll see you soon. Wow, it sounds like we're going to learn a lot today, and I can't wait. Now this first segment is really important for distance learning, because if you look around, you'll notice that your workspace at home looks very different than your workspace at school. And did you know having a neat and organized workspace can actually help you learn better? In today's first lesson, Mrs. McDermott is going to walk you through some really great tips on how to organize your workspace. Kids, this is Mrs. McDermott with a distance learning tech tip. As you've probably noticed, learning and completing work at home feels a little bit different than it does in your classroom at school, doesn't it? I'd like to share three tips for setting up your workspace to help you be successful at distance learning. Tip number one, work with a parent to find a spot in your house where you can focus and do your best work. This area should be quiet and free of distractions. Tip number two, have your materials ready in your workspace. This might include your technology, an independent reading book, paper, sticky notes, pencils, and crayons. Think about the materials that you will use most often. Tip number three, Keep your work area organized and free of distractions. This means keeping toys and other play items away so you can easily focus on your schoolwork and find your materials. Before I go, I'd like to introduce to you two Ellington Kindergarten students, Landon and Carter. Let's check out their amazing distance learning workspaces. math is everywhere, it's all around us. And to prove that, in one of the funniest math lessons you're ever going to get, Dr. D shows you that math is everywhere. Hey families, math is everywhere. Are you counting at home? You can count when you exercise. One, two, three, four, ow, five, six, seven. You can count by twos. Two, four. 
six, eight, ten. You can do addition playing basketball. Two. Plus two is four. Plus two is six. Plus two is eight. You can do math while eating your snack. Four, one, two, three, four, multiplied by three rows, one, two, three, is 12. You can do subtraction while eating your snack. 12 minus one is 11. 11 minus four, is seven. Numbers are everywhere. Four! Numbers are all around your home. How did you use them today? Until next time, do some exercise. And do some math. Thank you, Dr. D. Well, it was great to see Dr. D trying to mix math with physical activity, but let's leave the physical activity stuff to the professionals. Which brings us to our next segment. Did you know that when you've been sitting too long, either at the TV or at the computer, it's really good for your body to get up and move around? To get us up and get our bodies moving, Mrs. Murphy has a really fun activity for us. Friends, this is Mrs. Murphy, physical education teacher at Windermere School. I'm missing all of my students so much, and I'm sure my center school and Crystal Lake friends are missing their teachers, and Mrs. K and Mr. B as well. This is my son, Drew. Hi. And he's going to help us today as we go through a few fun activities and exercises. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to practice our locomotor movements. All you need, you can wear sneakers or you can be in your socks like Drew and you just need a little bit of an open space. So, the first thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna let Drew roll the dice, and we're gonna do whatever locomotor movement that it lands on. So Drew, why don't you stand right here, and roll the dice again towards the wall, and tell us really loud what it is. Hop. All right, hopping. Just so all of my friends remember, hopping is one foot. So we're gonna hop a few times on the left, a few times on the right. Remember, we gotta keep our balance so our muscles are tight. All right, Drew, hop around. Try to keep your balance. When your foot gets tired, you can switch to the other leg. All right, go ahead, Drew, get the dice. Let's practice the next movement. Skipping, one of the most challenging locomotive movements for my friends. So to remind you all, skipping is a step with a hop, step and a hop. So we're gonna practice like this, step and hop on one foot. Step, hop on one foot, step, hop, Step hop, go ahead, Drew. Step hop, step hop, step hop, step hop. Awesome, nice job. All right, roll the dice again, Drew. Why don't you roll it towards the wall? Side slide, all right, the side slide is when we go sideways and we have to put our, we're gonna put one leg out and then together, and we say out, together. We're gonna stay low, we're gonna go back the other way. You can go faster if you want, Remember not to cross your feet because you don't want to lose balance and fall. So stay low, out together, awesome. All right, Drew, roll the dice. You're good at rolling, we haven't gotten any doubles yet. All right, marching, next one is march. Super simple, I know all my friends can definitely march. We're gonna put our knees up and stomp. Try to make your feet nice and loud if you want. All right, awesome. Go ahead, you roll the dice again. We only have a few more. Oh, roll it again. Good. One more time. Oh, awesome. Okay, gallop, one of my favorites, and all of my students, one of their favorites too. Galloping is, think of yourself as having two horsies, the front horsey and the back horsey. So the front horse, 
is always the leader, the back horse never catches up. So it looks like this. One foot is the leader. One foot is the leader. A common mistake some of my little friends make is they turn sideways. Don't forget, horses don't run sideways, they run forward. So make sure your toes stay forward when you're galloping. And then try the other leg. Put the other leg, make the other horse be the leader. Good. All right. And that's it for our locomotor movements. I hope you had fun. Now we're gonna take those movements and we are gonna use some of them in a fun listen, freeze, and move video. Hope you had fun. Stay tuned for the next part. Here's a fun question for you. What's something you always have with you and always leave behind? Here's a hint. The answer is right at the tip of your fingers. Did you say fingerprints? That's right. Fingerprints are the unique pattern at the tips of your fingers and thumbs. These little bumps and ridges are unique to you and no one else will ever have the same fingerprints as you. When we touch things, we leave behind these little marks that show the prints. And today, Mrs. Lands is gonna show you a really fun art project that you can make using your fingerprints. Welcome to the One Room Schoolhouse. Materials to have at your fingertips today, including your fingertips. Wait, Wait a second. We don't have any fingertips. Yeah, in case you haven't noticed, you don't either. Uh, could somebody give us a hand? <laughs> Yay! Fingertips ready? Okay, first thing you can try is a stamp pad. If you don't have a stamp pad at home, you can try watercolor paints. Dip your finger in a wet paper towel and then on the paint to get some of the pigment and use that as an ink pad. And if you don't have either of those things, you can try a regular washable magic marker. Simply color your fingertips with the point of the marker. And there you have it. Just repeat after me. My itsy bitsy finger got covered all in blue. You try. My itsy bitsy finger got covered all in blue. Very good. Down to the paper. Let's see what it can do. Down to the paper, let's see what it can do. Woohoo! Here come some lines and shapes to make it fly. Here come some lines and shapes to make it fly. And my itsy bitsy blue birds are happy in the sky. And the itsy bitsy blue birds were happy in the sky. Yay! Now let's try it with materials! Okay, let's try it together now. My itsy bitsy finger got covered all in blue. Down to the paper, let's see what it can do. Here, Here come, come some lines and shapes to make it fly. And our itsy bitsy blue birds are happy in the sky. Um, so we were just finishing up our frog and the fish and some of the birds. That's, those are some cool finger paint drawings. I drew two bees, except this one doesn't have any wings. I drew a turtle and a porcupine. Even though I like porcupines and bees, my favorite was the turtle because it's cute. Aw, such a sweet sentiment.
So for my project, I did a space theme and I started off with this Saturn um, and then I drew this human rocket ship chasing this alien mothership in a comet full of asteroids and there's a random space dude. Yeah, and oh, I think this might be the sun. I drew a tree and I drew a branch with a beehive on it and I drew a I made a bee flying from that beehive and I also made a porcupine. Like I said before, I one two of my favorite animals are bees and porcupines, but the porcupine ended up looking like a spider. I don't know. So, I think my favorite part about this drawing is the bee and the beehive. So for my final artwork, I made an ocean themed scene with some jellyfish, two narwhals, a manatee, a dolphin, and a lobster. And then I added a little bit of detail. Whoa. That was good. Cool. Any feedback? You mean advice? You mean constructive criticism? Well, I think your lobster could have more detail. I mean, it kind of looks like a shrimp, to be honest. And Mrs. Giraffe, I think your picture could have more planets and the sun could be a little bit bigger. Do you have any advice for me, Mrs. Giraffe? Well, yeah, I think I'll, I'll fix that. And I also think that maybe you could add some grass and maybe a sky and a sun. And for Miss Goat over here, um, maybe you could add some more waves. Mm -hmm. Great, thanks, yeah, yeah. Um, I agree with the grass and I think branches, um, more branches on the tree. That one branch looks kind of like it might break and that would stink if the beehive fell. So maybe make that one a little thicker. And uh, I really like the choice of black paper for this space one. That was really creative. Um, I think I would definitely make the sun brighter. I agree, right? Did you know that the sun is actually a giant star? Whoa! What? <laughs> yeah, I think you could add more lobster to your detail. <laughs> See you all next time. I don't see he is a spider. I don't see he is a man. I don't see he is a lazy one. Do little as he can. Yeah, do little as he can. So, I don't see. I don't know about you, but I know I could definitely use a little stretch break. So for this next activity, you're going to need a lot of room to move around, and you're going to need a lot of energy.
And now, everyone, is one of my absolute favorite parts of the show because we have a very special mystery reader for you. Let's pull our mystery reader up. Here we go. So our mystery reader is going to tell you a couple interesting fun facts about themselves. Hello, everyone. So a couple fun facts about me is that I love to do yoga and practice mindfulness. I also have four daughters. Do you know who I am? It's Dr. Nash Titzel from Crystal Lake. So I have a great story I wanna share with you today. This is one of our favorites in our household, A Big Moon Cake for Little Star by Grace. Little Star's mama laid the big moon cake onto the night sky to cool. Now Little Star, mama said, your moon cake took us a long time to bake, so let's see if you can make it last a while. Can you remember not to touch this mo big moon cake until I tell you to? Yes, Mama, said Little Star, nodding. And Little Star remembered as she brushed her teeth, washed her face, snuggled into bed, and fell asleep. But in the middle of the night, Little Star woke up. She forgot everything her mama had said and only remembered the big moon cake. Pat, 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 pat. Little Star's soft feet tiptoed to the big moon cake. Would her mama notice if she took one tiny nibble? Little Star didn't think so. Mmm, yum. But someone was coming. Little Star flew back to her bed. The next night, Little Star remembered the big moon cake again. That one bite had been so sweet and tasty. Was the cake still there? <gasps> yes, yes it was. The big moon cake, perfect, all alone and delicious in the sky. Would her mama notice if she took one more tiny nibble? Little Star didn't think so. Yum! Little Star flew back to her bed. And the next night, what do you think Little Star remembered? The big moon cake, of course. Would Mama notice if she took one more tiny nibble? Little Star didn't think so. Mmm, yum! And the night after that, what did Little Star do? Nibble, nibble, yum! <gasps> night after night, Little Star took tiny nibble after tiny nibble of the big moon cake. <gasps> oh no, what's happening to the moon cake? Until one night, Little Star's mama went to look for the big moon cake. Where was it? It was gone. Instead of a glowing round cake, there was just a trail of twinkling stars. Little Star, her mama said, shaking her head, even though her mouth was curving. You ate the big moon cake again, didn't you? Little Star looked up, her grin reflecting her mama's smile. Yes, Mama, Little Star said, nodding. Now let's go make another. And so they did. The end. I hope you enjoyed that story. Thanks for having me as your mystery reader. 
Bye. Thank you so much, Dr. Nash. What a great story. What do you guys say at home? Everybody say, thank you, Dr. Nash Ditzel. You're most welcome. In this next video, we're going to learn about vowel teams. Vowel teams are when you have two vowels that are next to each other in a word. Now, sometimes these can be really tricky, but we have Mrs. Malone who's here to teach us to become super readers. Hi readers, it's Mrs. Malone coming to you from my kitchen today. Um, and today I wanted to talk to you about vowel teams. You're gonna notice um, as your books start to get a little bit trickier that your words are gonna have vowel teams in them. And so there's lots of vowel teams. Look at all these vowel teams. But today I just wanted to talk to you about the first two vowel teams on our vowel teams chart. Um, and these two vowel teams make the A sound. So here's the first one. Notice how there's an AI working together as a team. So this vowel team says A. Let's echo it back. AI beat A. And then there's one more. See these two letters working together as a vowel team? This team says AY play A. So two different combinations, but they make the same sound. They both say A. So you ready to do some word work with me? and figure out some tricky words with these vowel teams. Okay, I'm gonna use my fridge. I hope you can see okay. Okay, so up here on my fridge, I have a digraph and this digraph says ch. Now I'm gonna add my vowel team. What does that vowel team say? That's right, it says a. So I have ch, a. Now I'm gonna add the ending. Mm, let's put it together, ch, a, mm chain. So you can do that work in your own books too if you get stuck. You want to try another one? Okay, this is a word that I know a lot of you have been using with your at-home learning lately. Are you ready? Notice that this word has a blend at the beginning. So I see a B and an R. I know that when B and R blend together they say R. Now I'm going to add my vowel team. What does that AI vowel team say again? That's right, it says A. We're gonna add this to the end. Mmm, ready? Br A N brain. I know you guys have been using your brains a lot this week with your at-home learning. Okay, so we did our AI vowel team. Now we're gonna do a couple with the AY vowel team. Are you ready? So here's the first one. Okay, so ready to read it with me? D A. Put it together. Day. I hope everybody is having a good day today. Okay, and then I want to show you one more. One of my favorite things to play with during art time. This one has a blend too. Notice C and L together say so cluck. Then we're gonna add our vowel team. K A. Put it together. Clay. Nice job, readers. There's one more thing that I want to show you that you can do. When you're reading your books, if you get to a tricky word, and you want to practice it a little bit more, you can do something called rainbow writing. We like to do this in my classroom a lot. So here's two rainbow words. There's the first one. I found this word in my book and it had that vowel team that we were just talking about. So I thought I would take it out of my book and put it on a piece of paper in rainbow order. Isn't that cool? So you ready to read this one with me? Whoa. A t. And then we have our glued sound, that ing sound. Now let's put it together waiting. So I took it out of my book and I wrote it in rainbow order. It's called rainbow writing and it's a good way to practice new tricky words. There was one more word in my book that I was reading today that I decided to take out and turn into a rainbow. Ready to try it with me? It has a blend at the beginning. Pl, A, and that glued sound at the end again. Ing. Put it together. Playing. So again, if you're reading today, and you find some words with our vowel teams that say A, you can take them out of your book and turn them into rainbow writing. 
Okay, readers, I'll be back tomorrow with another vowel teams lesson for you. But for now, happy reading. Bye. Have you ever tried to catch a ball but missed? Sometimes it's hard for our hands and eyes to work together at the same time with our brain. But Mrs. Murphy has a really fun way to train our hands and eyes to work together. So for this next activity, you're going to need two tissues and a lot of space to move around. Hi everybody, it's Mrs. Murphy again and my son. True. And we are on the last part of our adventures today and we're going to do a little skill challenge working on juggling. Juggling helps with your hand-eye coordination, and the only things you're going to need, usually in PE class, we use juggling scarves, but today we're going to use tissues. So you're only going to need two tissues to do this challenge and a little bit of space. We're going to start with one tissue. Here you go, Drew. So when you start this, you are going to need, want to hold the tissue in the middle, and you're going to kind of want to grab it. So. When you are juggling, when you're throwing and catching, you want to keep the back of your hand facing up when you throw and when you catch. So we call the catch, we call it a claw because you're kind of clawing like a lion. So it's going to look like this. When we throw, we're going to have the back of our hand, we're going to toss it up. You don't have to toss it high. We're going to throw it up, we're going to look at it, and we're going to claw it down. Throw, look, claw. So when you claw, you got to keep your eye on it. That's all right. Here we go. Ready? Let's try it. Here we go, Drew, let's practice a few. Throw, look, claw. Throw, look, claw. And they're, they're tissues, so they're a little bit hard, but we can do this. Throw, look, claw, and grab it. All right, awesome. Our first challenge is going to be toss and catch with both hands. So we're gonna have our palms, uh, excuse me, the back of our hands facing up, and we're gonna toss it, and we're gonna claw it with both hands. Here we go, Drew, ready? Toss, look, claw. Toss, look, claw. Toss, look, claw. Awesome. A couple more times. All right. Next one. Toss, clap, catch. So we're going to catch it. We can claw it with one hand or two. And here we go. We're going to toss it up again. Back of our hand face in the ceiling. Toss, clap, claw. Toss, clap, claw. It's a big challenge with the tissues because they kind of float down however they want to go. So you really got to keep your eye on them. All right, next challenge. And that's why we claw downward. Toss and catch with your right hand. So here we go. For a lot of you, this is your dominant hand, the hand you like to write with or eat with. So here we go. We're going to toss, look, claw. And you have to move. You might have to move your feet. You might not be able to stay in one spot. You might have to move to it. So toss, look, claw. Toss, look, claw. <laughs> toss, look, claw. All right, let's try our left hand. That could be your dominant hand. It could be your non-dominant hand. So this might be a big challenge for a lot of you. Here we go. We're going to toss, look, claw. Toss, look, claw. You don't have to toss it very high. Toss, look, claw. Couple times. Keep your eye on it. All right, the next one, we are going to do toss and catch switching hands. So we're going to toss with our right and claw with our left. Or oh, you can claw with your left hand. You got it. Let's see it, Drew. Toss, look, claw. Switching hands. Toss, look, claw. Toss, look, claw. <laughs> Try to stay on your feet. It's easier to catch when you're on your feet. There we go. All right, next one. Oh, toss, kneel, catch. Here we go. We're tossing the claw. We're going to toss it, kneel, and claw. Nice, Drew. Ready? Toss, kneel, claw. Awesome. One more time. We got that. I think you got that down. I'm going to challenge myself with my left hand. Toss, look, claw. Awesome. All right, next one. We're almost done. We have a few more left. Toss, under, under your leg, and catch. Ready, Drew? Claw. If you want to try it with the other leg, you can put it in your other hand and do the same thing. Toss the claw. You can do it. Try your right hand. There you go. Oh, you did right hand to left hand. That was a good one. All right, the next one. I think we have a few more. Low 
medium, and high catch. catch. So we're going to start at a low level with our toss. So it's going to look like this. Toss, look, claw. Toss, look, claw. Okay, keep it low. First one's low. Then we're going to get a little bit more medium level. It's bad at your head. And then we're going to go at a high level. So put that back of your hand way up and reach up high. Keep your eye on it and claw. Reach up high, keep your eye on it, claw. Wait, oh, we, we clawed so hard. I caught it. I you caught it. it. <laughs> All right, two more, I believe. Yep, this one's the toss, the brush your teeth and catch. Remember, it's important to brush your teeth. So we're gonna go like this, toss, and claw. <laughs> nice, you gotta give yourself a high toss. Ready, toss, brush your teeth and claw. Awesome, and the last one, create your own catch. So it could be anything you want. I think I'm gonna do a toss, a twirl, and a catch. Uh, this time I might do a, oh, I missed it. <laughs> oh, I got it. It's okay if you mess up, you just try it again. All right, my friends. Um, great job. I hope you had fun. Yeah. <laughs> and Drew and I thank you for playing along today. Um, we hope you got some exercise. We hope it um, helped you with your hand-eye coordination, your skill. And um, it's been fun. Bye for now. Do you like jokes? Because I have a really great science joke. Why did the scientist remove his doorbell? Because he wanted to win the Nobel Prize. No? Not good? Okay. Well, here's something that's really good. Because Mrs. Whiting has an amazing science experiment that she's about to show you. Not only can you do this at home, but we're also going to find out, can a liquid float inside another liquid? Hello, Mrs. Whiting here. During our distance learning, we need to stay curious, so I have some investigations for us to do. My class has been studying matter and one of the things we've been looking at is the properties of solids. I have three solids here, a granite, stone, rock or rock from Maine, a golf ball and a foil ball. And I'm wondering how heavy these are and I'm wondering what that means for sinking and floating. So let's give that a try. Let's watch it and see if we can grow some ideas. Here's the rock. Here's the golf ball, and here is the foil ball. What ideas are you growing about sink and float? So I'm thinking the solids are sinking and floating, but I'm thinking about the water, and I'm wondering, do liquids sink and float? So we've talked about solids sinking and floating, but what about liquids sinking and floating? Let's do an investigation. I have an empty glass, and then I found some different liquids. I have corn syrup, dish soap, water with red food coloring, and oil. And what I'm going to do is pour them in slowly, and I want you to notice what happens to see if you can grow some ideas about the liquids. Okay, the first one is the corn syrup. Let's do the dish soap. What are you noticing? What are you noticing? All right, now let's add the water. Now finally, let's add the oil.
Now let's take it to the next level. Let's add the golf ball to this and see what happens. What do you notice? Well, scientists, I hope you enjoyed this investigation. Stay curious. Wow, that sure was a lot of fun learning all this stuff today. Actually, I learned so much, I can't even remember all the stuff that I learned. So here to remind us about all the things we learned is Mr. Hendrickson again. Mr. Spada, what an awesome show. I can't thank you and all the teachers enough. Wow, that was great stuff. And all of the stuff is really connected to the standards. So parents, this is specifically for you, just so you know, all the content in today's show is directly connected to standards. And we're gonna go through that right now. So to recap today, we learned about the importance of creating a good learning space so you have everything you need and you can stay focused. We also learned about how fun counting can be and you can count anywhere. You can count lots of objects all around the house and that's a lot of fun. We got lots of physical education to make our bodies and minds stronger. We also learned how to make neat artwork from our thumbprints. We also had a very special mystery reader today, Dr. Sue Nash Ditzel. And oh boy, is it fun reading and we really encourage you to read at home. You also learned about vowel teams. Weren't they tricky? But not that tricky. And we'll come back to those in a later episode. And lastly, we had a science experiment that taught us about density. That was a tractor trailer going by. It was a little loud. Students, thank you so much for watching our first episode of the One Room Schoolhouse in Ellington Public Schools. Listen, this whole distance learning thing is super challenging for us all. And as your assistant superintendent, you're used to seeing me in a, in a jacket and a tie and I walk into the classrooms, you know, center school, you see me Monday morning, Crystal Lake, you see me Tuesday, Windermere, you see me Friday. On uh, Wednesday, Thursday, I'm at the middle school and in the high school. So part of part of what I love about my job is I get to go into classrooms every day and check out what's going on and, and connect with students and teachers, make sure everybody has what they need. And since we can't do that right now, we've been try trying to brainstorm on any kind of idea we can to bring the learning to you so the learning doesn't stop and you keep learning as we go through distance learning. So hopefully, uh, you enjoyed our episode. We have awesome teachers that are thinking about you all the time. And we want to let you know we're here for you during this time. And also for all your parents and families out there that are watching this, it's important that you know all aspects of our uh, first ever one room schoolhouse are directly connected to the Connecticut core standards. Um, and it's intentional uh, what was put on the show today. And we want to do everything we can again to keep the learning going in Ellington. Well, everyone, that's the end of our show. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you had a lot of fun and learned a lot. But now it's time for you to teach us. So what we want is for you to share something you learned today in your distance learning classes. So what you have to do is tell a parent something you learned and they can either videotape you telling them or they can type it out in an email and send it to the email address below. And we will show that in an upcoming episode. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you next time.